Grace and peace to you from Grace and Peace to You Gathering on this Super Bowl day. I've already been to work today because I'm a member of a central crew of workers at Washington Lee University, so we've already been in the snow and got to play with it. Hope you're doing well today. As you can see, I'm supporting my Raiders, even though they're not in the Super Bowl. They did beat the Chiefs, and we could talk on and on about that, but we're here to talk about God's Word and what He has to say to us today. And if I were to title this message, I would steal from a song from ACDC, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. But I would add to it, Good Deeds Done at His Great Cost, the Great Cost of Jesus Christ dying for my sin and your sin on the cross. He who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in him and so we would be able to fulfill the good works he has created for us to do. So, without further ado, let me pray. Father, help us to understand your supernatural way. Help us to not live in the natural Help our habits to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which is renewed by your living, inerrant, infallible, awe-inspiring word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Yes, there is a natural and there is a supernatural. We live in the natural. We inherited a disease called sin, and we need the supernatural help that Jesus Christ has delivered by becoming our sin. He stepped into this world, became one of us. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's what John tells us. And he did all this so that he could defeat the sway of this disease sin has over our hearts and our minds so that we could do the works that we were meant to do. The greatest work, though, that we were meant to do is in John six twenty nine. Jesus replied, after he was asked this question, the question was in 28, what can we do to perform the works of God, they asked. Jesus replied, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he has sent. What can we do to perform the works of God? To believe in the one he has sent, to believe in Jesus. Let's look at Luke 10, 38 through 39. And here's a picture of someone doing a lot of work and someone doing another kind of work which was most important at the time. And I'm flipping through here. Bear with me. Luke, I'm going to give you time to flip too in case you have a Bible or you want to find a Bible so you can make sure that I'm reading correctly. Luke 10 38 through 42. There were a group of people called the Bereans who made sure that the Apostle Paul was speaking the truth. They searched the scriptures themselves to make sure. So whatever I share, you need to, to follow up on and make sure that I'm reading it correctly as well. Luke 10, 38. While they were traveling... Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, and she came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. You know, I can I can understand. I get I get aggravated when people 
kind of sit back and appear lazy and aren't doing what their fair share. I understand that. Do you understand that? Have you been there? Maybe you're the person that doesn't do the fair share. I don't know. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're worried and upset about many things. The one thing is necessary. And Mary has made the right choice and it will not be taken away from her. You see, there is an importance that the greatest work is believing in Jesus. S seriously sitting at his feet, which means garnering from, garnering from him all that we need for life and godliness. His divine powers have given us everything we need for life and godliness to be able to do these good works that he has created us to do. Uh, you can read that in uh, First Peter. His divine power has given us everything we need. So we need to be, just to be with Jesus on a daily basis. Just set apart time to dwell on the reality of who he is and who we are in light of who he is. It's super important. You don't want to get the cart before the horse is the expression. You, you can't, the horse has to pull out the cart. And in this case, Jesus is definitely the horse. And he, his good work dying in a place of us on the cross and taking upon our sin disease has enabled us to actually do good works because in our natural self, even when we try to do good works, there are flaws. You know, I've met many a person who says, well, I think I do good things, so I should get to heaven if there is one. Or I'm a good person. I think it's all that needs to happen is just me do good things. My friend, every person that's ever said that to me, I have seen... And others have, too, I'm sure, instances where this person wasn't exactly good. We can't, in our right minds, say that we've done everything good with good intentions and good motivations. We have to be very deceptive to ourselves and lie to ourselves to say that. Very few people no matter how kind, how good they are, I can honestly say that everything in their entire life has been done with pure motivation. Now, that changes when the Spirit of God gets a hold of our hearts and He gives us a desire to do what's right. And even then, we still battle, we still struggle, and we still need His help desperately. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 is where we're going to go next in God's Word. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously walked. This is the natural in which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler who exercises authority over the lower heavens. That's the prince of peace. I mean, excuse me. That's the prince of darkness. That's Beelzebub. That's Satan. According to the ruler who exercises authority over the lower heavens and the spirit now working in the disobedient. We all too previously lived among them in our fleshly desires. Carrying out the inclinations, that means dirty deeds, done dirt cheap. It's easy. It's natural to do dirty deeds, done dirt cheap. Dirty deeds and are done dirt cheap. That's the way the song goes. It's because it's natural for us to do and say, point fingers, make fun of, do wrong. It's natural. It's supernatural to go the opposite direction. 
carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts. And we were by nature children under wrath as the others were also. But, this is a huge but, but God. Who? But God. Who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with the Messiah, even though we were dead in trespasses, you are saved by grace. Together with Christ Jesus, he also raised us up and seated us in the heavens, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith, and this is not from yourselves. You didn't work for it. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. And I want to make a point here. This message is not about doing good works and attaining heaven, attaining salvation. This message is about coming to a saving knowledge through Jesus Christ that he is our Lord first of all he's our creator and he is our redeemer he redeemed us from sin and therefore he is our Lord and master our savior and because of belief in him he gives us the supernatural ability to do good works as a result. If you look in the book of James, it says, faith without works is dead. You can look that up. Faith without works is dead. That means faith comes first, works come second. And if you don't have good works coming out of faith, then your faith isn't real. But you cannot take good works, try to do good things, and find faith. It has to come from faith in Christ alone. For we are his creation. That's Ephesians 2.10. Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them. Isaiah 64.6 says our righteous acts, our good works, are good intentions are like filthy rags and these rags are the filthy of the filthy these rags are actually menstrual rags that they're talking about if you want to look up the actual definition from the translation from the original Hebrew so that's meant to be discarded not meant to be kept and saved it can't do anything but be discarded It needs to be discarded. It once had a good purpose and no longer. Our good works, apart from a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, are filthy rags. But our good works, when we are in Christ, we are living in Christ, we are saved in Christ, when we have been bought by Christ's blood, when we are redeemed, when we know that we have confessed with our heart and believed with our mouth, excuse me, when we believed with our heart and confessed with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then those good works have great reward because they're coming from him through us in the first place. Let's look at 1 Corinthians Three and uh, verse fourteen. Just to give a little emphasis on this, First Corinthians three and verse fourteen. Now let's look back. Actually, let's go back just a little bit to uh, verse ten. According to God's grace that was given to me, this is Apostle Paul. I have laid a foundation as a skilled master builder, and another builds on it. But each one must be careful how he builds on it. What deeds are we building with? Are they dirty deeds from the natural or good deeds from the supernatural from faith in Christ? No one can lay any foundation 
than what has been laid down. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on that foundation with gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, each man's work, each one, excuse me, each, each one's work will become obvious for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. The fire will test the quality of each one's work. If anyone's work that he has built survives, he will receive a reward. So, if our work is just good intentions built with anything other than faith in Christ, it will fall apart. If anyone's work he, that he has built survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, it will be lost. But he will be saved, yet it will be like an escape through fire. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's sanctuary, that the Spirit of God lives in you? If anyone destroys God's sanctuary, God will destroy him, for God's sanctuary is holy. And that is what you are. You are a holy set apart holy means set apart for a specific reason you are holy set apart for god to do good works my friend not to do dirty deeds and they're done dirt cheap you know the only thing you have to do is be in a family for a few minutes and understand how sometimes we uh get we we can cut down each other we can instead of building up each other we can cut down make fun of point fingers, blame, get frustrated with. But that God calls us in the family of God to do things differently by the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. Supernatural over the natural, my friend. Micah six eight puts it very well and I'm gonna look I'll let you uh we're gonna look at some Hebrew words here too. Micah 6 8. And I'm going to somewhat sing it to you since I've been singing the ACDC song a little bit. Instead of dirty deeds and a done dirt cheap, this is what God says Mankind, he has told you what is good and what the Lord requires of you is to act justly and to love mercy and to walk calmly with your God. He has told thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you is to act justly and to love mercy and to walk calmly with your God. That's totally different from dirty deeds and are done dirt cheap. Correct? The natural versus the supernatural. Let's look at this. The Lord require, What is good and what the Lord requires of you? To act justly. And this comes about through faith in Christ. To act justly. Let's look at the word. And the word is, let me get, okay, the word is kasad, that's a Hebrew word, and that basically just means to do everything you do in a just manner. What is just? Well, there is a standard, and the standard of, is God's law. And the standard is the law of grace as well. So he, what is just? It's doing the right thing according to God's word. To love mercy, it can be translated as also faithfulness and kindness. And the word, Hebrew word, is mishpat. Mishpat. It says, deeds that are done in goodness, kindness, and faithfulness. That means the deeds that are done in your life 
works that are good works that come from a true kindness toward your fellow human being, uh, a, a real goodness toward your fellow human being, and a real faithfulness, a, a loyalty toward doing the right thing for someone and for and a loyalty to God. The same word is used in the loyalty in, um, that's expressed in Hosea when this guy is continuously loyal to his wife even though she is not loyal to him as an expression of the loyalty and faithfulness of God to us despite our many sins. And to walk humbly, the word humble is sana in the Hebrew. That was just a little extra for you. Now, Colossians 1 tells us in uh, 13 to 14, and then we're going to look at 21 and 22. It talks about what we once were when we were in the natural and what we are now in the supernatural. And it also uses some verbs and expressions that we need to know that faith in Christ to believe is the greatest work to believe in Christ is the greatest work and all the other works that we need to work happen because of this relationship that we set as most important, sitting at the feet of Jesus day in and day out as we go about the day. We can sit at the feet of Jesus even, I'm not, it's not just a physical one time thing a day where you sit down and be with Jesus is throughout your day as you're working, as you're playing as you're doing whatever you can sit at the foot of Jesus while you're standing up and while you're working hard you can sit at the foot of Jesus while you're going through intense struggles, you can sit at the foot of Jesus at, at any point in your life because you can it's a mindset it's a mindset that leads to what we do. The Word of God says, as a person thinks, so he is. Who we dwell upon is who we become. Jesus did good deeds. We would do good deeds because Jesus did, because he lives in us. Our life is hidden in Christ. Colossians 1 um, 13 through 14. Let's go there. And it's right after Philippians, in case you don't know. Jesus has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. We have redemption. The forgiveness of sins in Him. We have been trans. That was a natural. We were in the domain of darkness, but He has transferred us into the kingdom, into the good kingdom. Twenty-one through twenty-two of Colossians one. Once you were alienated and hostile in your minds because of your evil actions, those dirty deeds done dirt cheap. But now, Jesus has reconciled you by his physical body through his death to present you holy, faultless, and blameless before him. Now that should give you a picture of the good deed that Jesus did, the great work, the finished work on the cross. He said it is finished when he gave his spirit up on the cross. What is finished? Definitely not us. But what is finished is that we are no longer enslaved by the disease called sin. Even though we still battle it, we are not enslaved by it any longer. We have been set free and we are presented holy, faultless, and blameless before him. That should get you excited about doing good deeds. And that should make you 
run away from the dirty deeds done dirt cheap and when you do them to ask forgiveness and get back on track can I get an amen now we have a battle there's no doubt Colossians 3 talks about it and the words the let me go back I didn't go over this but uh, I mentioned it but there are verbs and catchphrases that we need to remember in our battle we need to set our minds on Christ. We need to put to death the habits of sin. We need to put off our old self and put on our new self. And that happens as we sit at the foot of Jesus throughout the day in that mindset. Colossians 3, 1 through 10. So, if you have been raised with Messiah... Seek what is above, where the Messiah is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on what is above, not on what is on the earth. Set your minds on what is above, not on what is on the earth. It doesn't say that you can't go around your day doing what you need to do, but it says your mindset, where your mindset is, is where your heart is. The supernatural. For you have died, and your life is hidden with the Messiah in God. When the Messiah, who is your life, is revealed, then you will also be revealed with him in glory. Therefore, put to death, put to death, put to death the dirty deeds done dirt cheap, which belongs to your worldly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath comes on the disobedience. And you once, you once, you once walked in these things when you were living in them, in the natural. But now you must also put away, put away, put away the dirty deeds done, dirt cheap, all the following. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off, put off, put off the old self with its practices and have put on put on put on the new self you are being renewed you are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator now to finish up with we'll talk about how we are slaves to good deeds slaves to righteousness because Jesus has freed us from being a slave to dirty deeds done dirt cheap. And then we're going to talk about how the Holy Spirit has been given to us freely when we were saved in Jesus. If you're not saved, you don't have the Holy Spirit and you won't understand the things of God. So please, my friend, do business with God today and ask him to save your soul. Because the Holy Spirit will give you the truth you need to not do the dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Not to be on the hamster wheel going around and around doing the same old thing and expecting different results, which is the definition of insanity. And then we're going to look at some last points, some practical points on what, how our good deeds should be done. And then a, a special very special good deed I'm going to finish out with so slaves to righteousness Romans 6 let's look at it Romans 6 6 through 23 now backtracking here from where I was Romans 6 6 through 23 for we know that our old self our old self that's before we knew Jesus was crucified with Jesus in order that sin's dominion over the body may be abolished, that means done away with, so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin, since a person who has died is freed from sin's claims. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over Jesus, for in light of the fact that he died, he died to sin once for all. But in light of the fact that he lives, he lives to God. 
So you, so you too consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, therefore, why for? Do not let your sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its desires and do not offer any parts of it to sin as weapons for unrighteousness. That means those dirty deeds done dirt cheap. But as those who are alive from the dead, offer yourselves to God and all the parts of yourselves to God as weapons for righteousness. Good deeds. For sin will not rule over you because you are not under law but under grace. Grace allows us not to do the dirty deeds done dirt cheap, but to do the good deeds that are enabled because of the great costs of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Next point, as we're wrapping up, the Holy Spirit given to us as the mark of our coming redemption he has sealed us our sealed our salvation in him and we're going to look at John 16:13 and it goes like this when the spirit of truth who is the holy spirit comes he will guide you into all truth For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. And what he hears is what the Father has to say. And he has said everything through Jesus' Son. So we have hope to do good deeds because the Holy Spirit lives in us if we are saved. Now, how do we do our good deeds when the Lord calls us to do what's right? to choose over right and wrong well there's a good litmus test in Matthew 6 because things can still be done with the wrong motive and we want to do things in the right in the right way with the right heart with the right heart mindset Matthew 6 says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness, your good deeds, in front of people to be seen by them. Otherwise, you will have your, no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give to the poor, don't sound a trumpet before you. Do, 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 do. Look at me. Look at what I did. Don't do that. Don't sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be applauded by people. I assure you, they've got their reward. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And it even talks about praying. We're not to pray like the hypocrites because they love to pray standing in the synagogues on the street corners to be seen by people. I assure you, they've got their reward. This is Jesus speaking. But when you pray, go to your private room, shut your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't babble like the idolaters, since they imagine they'll be heard for the many words. Don't be like them, because your Father knows the things you need before you ask them. And it keeps going on. You can keep, and you can look in to Matthew 6 for yourself. But the whole heart attitude that we need to have when we're doing the works that God requires us is this kind of attitude. And lastly, in Luke 6, 35. Now I want you to know this is a tall order for most of us, for really any of us. But I'm going to leave you with this good work because everything else is dirty deeds and they're done dirt cheap. I don't want you to live that way, my friend. You weren't created to live that way. You were created to do good deeds because of the great sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for you and made for me. And Luke 6 look, start in 27. But I say to you who listen, this is Jesus speaking, not me. 
Love your enemies. Do what is good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone hits you on the cheek, offer them the other also. And if anyone takes your coat, don't hold back your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks you, and from one who takes the things, your things, don't ask them back. Just as you want others to do for you, do the same for them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? And on down into 35. Love your enemies. Do what is good. Lend, expecting nothing in return. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is gracious to the ungrateful and evil. Be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Friends, I hope you know that dirty dun's dirt cheap. It's just a vicious cycle of nastiness. The good deeds done out of faith and the new life that Jesus Christ has given you will bring great reward not only in the hereafter but also now because you will be blessed. You will bless others and life will be more abundant. Lord bless and keep you. Grace and peace to you from grace and peace to you gathering. Hope you have a great Super Bowl Sunday. Go Raiders.